Hey, 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 there you are. Man, you're looking fantastic today. Yeah, really, like you got an extra sparkle in your smile. I love that. Hey, everybody, um, I'm not there, but I'm there. I can see you. Not really, I made that up. I really can't see you. Today, I want you to take really great notes, okay? And I'm gonna check your notes when I see you again. But again, take just fantastic notes. Some of you think I want you to run ahead and fill those out, but that's not true. I got a process, I got a journey to bring you along on, so please don't run ahead. Follow really, really close. Um, race you to page 12. Go as fast as you can, page 12. Give me a check check when you get there. Oh yeah, there's two of you. I need more, I need more. Page 12, page 12. All right, I think that's most of you. All right, make sure the person next to you is on page 12 too. It's, it's the new book, okay? If they have the old book, they need to run their locker and get the old book. But anyway, let's let's keep moving ahead. Okay, we got meters and centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in every meter. And you just see what you hear? I see it. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Oh yeah, that was the unit rate alarm. Yeah, write that down, unit rate. Because not only do we have the unit rate alarm go off, but there it is, there's the unit rate. So it tells us that there's one meter and, and equal to 100 centimeters. Okay, that we do know. So as the meters change, the centimeter is going to change, right? So one meter is 100 centimeters. So 0.94 meters is almost like saying we want 94% of 100. That's kind of what it's looking for. So this is what it looks like, okay? So don't just put a number in this box, okay? I'm gonna show you this, we're gonna set the math up. So we've got 100, we got our unit rate, because remember our unit rate shows up in our solution, our unit rate shows up in our equation. So 100 times 0.94. All right, anytime I multiply by 100, my decimal just moves. All right, so 100 times 0.94, my decimal moves two places, so that's gonna be 94. So we have now meters is 1.67. But I'm going to use my unit rate of 100 times 1.67. All right, anytime we multiply by 100, the decimal moves. It's going to move two places, 167. That's that's reasonable. All right, and I got 57.24. I'm going to go back to my unit rate. My unit rate times 57.24. Decimal's flipping over a couple times. Oh my goodness, look at all these. I got 5,724 centimeters in 57.24 meters. True story. So X, I am going to do the same thing I was doing. I have 100 times X, which equals 100 X. All right, and when I do that particular thing, this 100 means a couple things, right, right? So let's write that down. That 100 is my unit rate. Yes, you do need to write that down again. Please do that. But it also has another name. Actually, that number right there has like four or five different names. And right now we've met it being called the unit rate. I'm going to introduce you to another one. Okay. And there's four or five more to come in the future. But this is the other one. The other one is called, it's right here, the constant of proportionality. Oh, yeah. Try saying that one. The constant of proportionality. The constant of proportionality. I like to say this. So this number is my unit rate, but it's also my cop. Because I do not want to write constant of proportionality every time. That's a lot of words and a lot to say. But that's what it is. It's my constant of proportionality. And we'll talk more about that another day and what that means. So just trust me right now. That's what it's called. It is a number that constantly shows up. <laughs> All right, let's take a look over here. Centimeters to meters. So kind of same thing, same thing we're doing here, but it looks a little bit different. We got the one, but we want to look at the centimeters as the unit rate. So I am going to, inc I'm going to move my table a little bit higher. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Because I want the one here, which is going to be my unit rate. All right, so if I'm at my one here, um, I want my centimeter on the bottom because whatever I want one of needs to go on the bottom of my ratio, my ratio. So meters, let's take my meters is going to be one, which I'm getting from here, over my centimeters, which is 100, which I'm going to get here. So ladies and gentlemen, we now have our unit rate. It is this guy, one one hundredth. So one centimeter equals one one hundredth of a meter. Makes sense. A centimeter is tiny. A meter is long. Like if you spread your arms out, it's just over a meter. Yeah, that's a big boy. And a centimeter, that's like a little squishy part. That's like maybe the tip 
part of your, like maybe a fingernail, maybe your thumbnail. Your thumbnail might be a centimeter. All right, I digress. Let's move along here. So um, we know, whoa, we know that we get this one from this. This one comes from my unit rate, okay? I always use my unit rate. It is 100, 1 one 100th of 100 is one. Yes, you need to write that down. Please write that down. Even if you write huge, you can fit that in. Thank you. Are you caught up? Stay caught up. Take good notes. All right, let's move on. All right, if I have 250 centimeters, how many meters is that? All right, let's write that in there. Um, I need my unit rate. It's 1 one hundredth of 250. All right, so how many hundreds are in 250? There is 2.5. That makes sense. 78.2, that's 1 one hundredth of 78.2. It doesn't seem really fun, but if you think about it, because we're dividing by like 100, the decimal just moves and it's getting smaller. So I'm over two places, 0 0.782. Let's keep going. 1 one hundredth of 123.9. Mr. Weber, we get the point. Do we need to keep writing this down? Oh yeah, write these down. These are amazing notes. Remember these turn into like study notes later. All right, let's keep going. Um, oh, divided by 100, the decimal just moves. Um, and the number's getting smaller, so it's gonna move to the left. It's by 100, so two places, so it ends up being 1.239. That's amazing. And this last one, it's gonna be my unit rate times y. It's gonna be times my whatever my center is. No matter what my centimeter I'm gonna put in, no matter what I put in here, I'm gonna take 1 100th of it. Promise. Which equals 1 100th y. All right, this little guy right here. Oh yeah, this right here. Remember it has its two names. One name is it's the unit rate. And the next one is that new one. Remember it's the constant of proportionality. Yeah, say that. How many times can you say that in a row? Yeah, don't do that. That's super annoying, so don't do that. But the constant of proportionality or the cop. Yep, yep. Let's move along. Let's do that. Okay, we've well, actually answered most of these except for number four. We're gonna write an equation Okay, based upon each one of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this right here. Um, my centimeters. Okay, so if I look at this guy right here, what depends on what? This answer that we've been calculating, the answer we have been calculating depends on my meters. See that? So my, oh goodness, what's happening here? Okay, my answer in centimeters has been dependent on my meters. So this must be my dependent variable and this is my independent variable, so for this thing, which means I can write my equation because my dependent variable is gonna be what it equals. So centimeters equals my unit rate or my constant of proportionality, 100, times my independent variable, which is meters. Now think about that, that even makes sense, or it should make sense. How many centimeters do I have? Well, give me whatever my meters is and I'll multiply it by 100 and I'll tell you how many centimeters I have. Yeah, true story. Let's try it on this one right here. All right, so on this one, my length, the answer I have been getting, my calculations I have been doing, all have been dependent on this guy. So the length depends the length in meters depends on the length I've been getting in centimeters. Okay, so my dependent is meters, right? Because that's what it equals. My constant or proportionality or my unit rate times my centimeters. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, that's awesome. All right, see the bottom of page 12? Yeah, don't do that. Let's go to page 13, race you there. If you get to page thir 13, give me a check check. I'll just look over on the next page. All right, this one I'm going to do a little bit differently too, okay? So page 10, we're going to do a bunch of stuff in this space. Um, I'm going to write some big stuff. So write kind of small. So you guys that are like big writers that write really enormous, try to like tame it down a little bit. Like settle it down. It took Priya five minutes. To, okay, that seemed important. It took five minutes to fill a cooler with eight gallons of water from a faucet that was flowing at a steady rate. Let W be, okay, W is going to be my water. 
number of gallons of water in the cooler after T minutes. So I would like to use M for minutes, but they want us to use T, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so T represents my minutes, W represents my water. All right, before you just run ahead and start circling stuff, I want you to not do that. Let's organize our thinking. Let's do our process. All right, what two things are we comparing? I'm going to do a big T chart along this whole thing. I'm going to fill this whole thing in, okay? So a big old T chart. I don't know why they call it a T chart. What a weird name for this thing. All right, so the two things we're looking at is time. No, no, yeah, 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 it's time in minutes and water um let's see water w that's gonna be our gallons all right so what do we know in our story we know that the time is we know five minutes look how small i wrote it because i'm gonna write a bunch of stuff okay so five minutes for eight gallons of water that we know that that's in our story okay folks let's do our unit rate oh yeah let's do our unit rate so let's do for the time of one Oh yeah, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write an arrow. Doop 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 doop. Okay, for unit rate, I want it per one. So I'm gonna write a ratio, and whatever I want one of goes on the bottom. So I want one time my time to be one. So what? Yeah, go ahead and do your pre-ratio. Mr. Robert, do I need to write that? Yes, write it so you put the numbers in the right order. If you do it flip flop, you're <coughs> you're coughing. You're not gonna do right on this one. Okay, so let's do this. Let's write the ratio. So the water is eight and the time is five. So it's eight over five, which equals five goes into eight once with three left over. There is my unit rate. Nice, nice work. All right, so um, it looks like in this particular situation, um, our unit rate is right here. There's my unit rate. So um, I'm gonna put a T for time. So no matter what time I say, no matter what time I tell you, you are going to take it and multiply it by the unit rate. One and three fifths times time. Okay. Whatever I say, whatever I say the time is, if I say it's five, you're going to do one and three fourths of it. If I say it's 12, you're going to do times one and three fifths of it. If I do 147 minutes, you're going to do that times one and three fifths. So... What we're solving for is the amount of water. There's my equation. My water is my unit rate times those things. Because how much water, right? How much water is there depends on the time. It really does. All right, good, good, good. I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line because we're going to look at the other one because there's a second unit rate. There is. There's one on this side. Unit rate alarm. There's the unit rate right there. Okay, I want per one, what's the water? Gallons, per one gallon. So I need gallons on the bottom. All right, so my water is going to be on the bottom and my time is going to be on the top. Okay, my time is five and I'm getting it from up here. Uh, I'm getting it from up, up here. What is happening? Okay, hold so the standby. My computer, my thing is being all wonky. There we go. Okay, I'm, get, I'm getting it from up here. My five and my water, I'm getting it from here. So five eighths. Oh, that's done. That's just a fraction and I can't simplify it. So I'm going to leave that. All right. So how much time does it take to do it? How much time is it going to take to fill stuff? Well, it depends. It depends on how much water I want to put in or fill it in. So I got my unit rate, which is 5 eighths times W. That's my W. All right, couple things, couple things. Where this is getting easier and easier too, the more we practice. This thing right here, remember that? That's my unit rate, but also has a new name. Remember that? The constant of proportionality. It's a couple different things. So this is my second equation. And now we're going to look over here. We did all this work to look over here and see which ones match that. So W equals 1 and 1, 1 and 3 fifths T. That's this guy. And then T equals 5 eighths W. T equals 5 eighths. One of these is 5 eighths. It's got to be this one. Yeah. I like that. All right. Let's move along here. 
We've actually answered most of these things. I'm going to answer um, P. Or no, no, number four. Priya changed the water flow she's doing. So we got to kind of organize that a little bit. So it looks like she changed the flow. So we still look like we have time and water. So I'm going to do T-chart, but long way, because that's all we have room for. So we have time and minutes, and we have water. And it looks like she's doing three minutes for one gallon. So that means in one minute, it's a third of a gallon. And begin to notice the relationship between these two numbers. Notice that? Those are both unit rates. They're both constant of proportionalities. Um, but they have a relationship with each other. So let's go ahead and build the equations for it. Okay, so with the time. The time depends on the water. Okay. The time depends on the water. So, oops, I'm writing that way too much. So we got to find here. What constant of proportionality goes with this? Is it the three or is it the one third? Is it the three or is it the one third? And again, we're going to keep getting better and better at this. But the constant proportion out of the unit rate for this one is the water. So how much time? As soon as you tell me water, I'm going to multiply it by three. What is the time? Just tell me the water. I'm going to multiply it by three. Okay, let's try the other one. Let's do the water one. Okay, how much water? Time. Constant of proportionality. Or my unit rate. This one's going to be one third. So how much water? Well, give me the time and I'm going to do one third of it. How much water? Well, give me the time and I'm going to do one third of it. That's how this works. Again, we're going to get better and better at it. I think I find a lot of students do a really great job of organizing this one, but they spend a good chunk of time trying to figure out, okay, what goes here? Which one should I use, the three or the one third? And we will again practice that over time. All right, thanks for hanging out. This is all we're doing for our lesson. You got this. Hop into some practice time. Later, Gators. Um, I'm going to go and... Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go listen to an episode of Bob Ross. Yeah, but I'm going to listen to it in Norwegian because those are both two really good things. Norwegian language and Bob Ross painting.